Hello peeps, it's Chris from Socially Awkward Stitching Society and I'm coming to you today with a new design and a new technique. This is our Provac series. You have a choice of making a fob or a bookmark, two different phrases, and either a stitched eyelet or use the use of a metal grommet. So we're going to explore all of that today as well as how to do a clear vinyl applique. If I lift this up to the camera, hopefully you can see with the light this is a pretty shiny patent vinyl from My Punk Broidery, but I've also got clear vinyl over the barrel of the syringe. So the very first thing you're going to do is what I always want you to do, which is to print out your color change sheet that comes with your design. On one side you see the design and alignment marks so that if this was something you were putting on clothing or um, anything else that's not in the hoop, you could use these marks to figure out where you want that design to land. On the back, we have all of our colors. So let me move these out of the way, and let's take a moment to look at these. Our very first stop says applique, applique position, and that is what we run on our stabilizer so we know where to put our vinyl. Once we have our vinyl down, we're going to do all of these stops until we get down to attach clear vinyl and then we're going to stop and do something and then we have the last two stops before we attach the backing. So I always like to mark um, with whatever, you know, use whatever symbol you want, but I always like to mark when it's something I need to do besides just changing the thread color. So we'll be pulling this back um, in front of the camera as we go so that you can see how I use this to keep myself on track. Next, you are going to want to hoop up some stabilizer. I'm using a craptastic tearaway for this project, which for me has always worked out. I tend to buy really stable vinyl because I don't like fighting with stretchy soft vinyl. Um, if you're using something stretchier or softer, then you probably want to use a cutaway, but this is just the crappy, the crappiest um, tearaway that I can find. Super cheap and tears out really easily. So um, hoop it tight. If you can't make that sound on the back, it is not tight enough. And I'm going to take this over to the machine and stitch our placement run. All right, I am back. I've got that first run stitched out. That's our placement position stop. So that's number one here. I'm going to take a minute and just cross that off so I remember where I am and it gives us the outline of the design so that we can lay our vinyl over it. I've cut two pieces of vinyl, one for the front and one for the back, and I like my vinyl to extend about a half inch on either side of the placement line, but if you are more daring than I am um, and feel like living dangerously, you can uh, bring it in closer. It's a good way to use up some scraps. I'm going to get this positioned over the top here. And I love to use blue tape. If you've watched my videos before, you know this about me. It doesn't mar the vinyl. And it holds it nice and firmly against the stabilizer. I have a Janome, which is often in, um, on Facebook, I've heard other people refer to them as fucking Janome. So um, I guess fucking is her first name. And um, she likes to uh, do weird repositioning sometimes when she does a trim. So I usually put tape pretty far down, um, pretty, pretty much all along the sides here to keep her from grabbing the corner of the vinyl and uh, being a royal pain in my ass. Um, Janomis have a really low riding presser foot and so that is part of the problem as well. But this will be fine even if she decides to fly off to the side and do something erratic. All right, so I've got my vinyl taped down. I'm going to go run all of our design stops up until the point I'm going to attach the clear vinyl. Um, and then I'll show you how we do that step. Okie dokie artichokies. We are ready to attach our clear vinyl. I have all of the uh, color stops up until the attached clear vinyl 
stop run. I did swap out a color here um, because of the how how similar some of the grays are to this background. I decided to use this darker color here for um, the needle. Um, and I probably would have done it a little bit lighter than that, um, but I wanted to make sure that you guys could see on here because I know that on camera um, we lose some of the contrast. So um, here's where we are. Nope, that's not where we are. Here's where we are on our color stops. And um, you can see I've done all of these. Whoops, I forgot to mark these off. I'm in the habit of doing this because when I'm doing testos, I'm watching for so many different things, um, misplaced stitches, places where distortion is happening that I easily lose track of the colors. And um, I'm getting better at it, but when I was a beginner, I had the same issue just because it was all overwhelming. So I encourage people to keep this near them and mark them off because nothing's more disappointing than um, to throw the wrong color on at the wrong time. So we're about to do step number eight, which is to attach the clear vinyl. Um, and notice it doesn't give you a color. Um, that's because this is telling you to do something and it will top stitch. So I'm just gonna leave this skylight on. It's a cord 145. That's this color right here. It'll blend in well with these colors, but you could use white, you could use whatever color you want. If you want it to stand out, you could use a darker color. It is really up to you. So let me grab a piece of vinyl here to show you what I'm using. This is a 16 gauge clear vinyl, and you can get this at a lot of our vinyl suppliers. I'm pretty sure my punk broidery has it and Glitterbook Fairy has it. Um, I get mine um, from marinevinylfabrics.com, but you don't want to do that unless you want tons of it. Um, because the shipping, to get the shipping to work out, you really need to order a lot. Um, but this is about the weight you want. It's very pliable and flexible, but it's not so thin that it's going to perforate easily. I like to cut a piece that's quite a bit bigger than I need um, because I want to be able to have something to hold on to when I'm trimming it off after this step. And because I live in a house with critters, including a kitty and a dog, I'm going to wipe it off on my skirt to try to make sure, oops, there's some me hair on there, to try to make sure that I've got all the fuzzies off of it. You also want to make sure that you've got all your jumps trimmed really well, because once this is down, if they are there, they will be there forever. So I just lay it over the top like this, and you guessed it. Magic blue tape, and now I'm going to go sew that stop, and when we come back, I'll show you how to trim it. And here we go, we've got it stitched down. Now, when I trim this, I suspect it's not gonna be my best tripping, sorry, my best trimming job ever, because I'm gonna be kind of out far from my body to keep this under the camera. When you're doing any kind of trimming like this, keep it right up close to you so you're over the top and can see what you're doing. Uh, I'm gonna use my duckbill applique scissors uh, because they will be, I will be able to start them in the vinyl and slide them right along. Uh, I'm gonna do the shorter ends first. This can be a little tricky if you're in a smallish hoop but it is doable. So I'm folding it back just to give myself sort of an eyeball of where I want it to go. And, oh, that was really bad. Let me try that again. You could come back. It's better to cut off too little than too much. There we go. Because you don't want to nick those threads. And you can always come back and clean up most of it um, outside of the hoop once you once it, um, your design is done. Okay, I'm gonna do this side. This side is gonna be covered up by the plunger of the syringe, it's gonna be covered by other stitching. So this you do wanna get it as good as you can before you go to the next step. But the rest of it, you can clean it up after it's out of the hoop if that's easier for you. Okay. here. Oh, I didn't. Oh, good. Okay, not too bad. See, I'll probably come and clean that up after I'm done. 
just getting it out of the way of the lettering and the next stitching steps that are coming. Okay, not too bad. Have to be a little careful on the patent finish because it's easy to scratch it. Um, all right, so next we're going to stitch the last two stops before we attach the backing. And um, so I'm again, I'm going to substitute the darker gray here so that it's more visible for you. Um, and then this color is the lettering. And um, so I'm going to go do that. And when I get back, I'll show you how to attach the backing and how to do the uh, two kinds of grommets or eyelet and grommet. All right, we've got our design all stitched and we're ready to attach the backing. I have done stop number nine and stop number 10 and we're on 11. Um, again, you're going to pick your own color of thread here. I'm going to use the same sort of berry-ish, burgundy-ish color that I used for the lettering. And at this point, I'm going to pop in a bobbin with that thread on it as well so that my, stat my stitching matches on the front and the back when I stitch the back in place. So, this. So we're going to flip our hoop over and we're going to defy gravity by laying on our backing. And taping it in place like this. And I'm going to show you um, a little trick I learned to use with this kind of vinyl um, that will help keep it from sticking to the bed of your machine. Especially if you're in a humid climate, vinyls like this can stick to the bed of your machine and you end up with weird looping in the thread. But I have a way around that. So this is a water-soluble stabilizer um, and we call it, the, often you'll see people call it the saran wrap kind because it is see-through and very plasticky feeling. Find my rotary cutter here. What I'm going to do is put a layer of this over the vinyl once I've got it on the back of the hoop and that's going to help this glide over the bed of my machine so that I don't have any um, weird loopy thread events happening. And what I like about this is after you stitch it, you can um, you, it's easy to pull off, and if any little bits get cut under the threads, you just hit it with a damp cloth, and they'll disappear. All right, I think I have that all in place. So when I put this back on my hoop, the pretty side is down toward the bed of the machine. We are on the home stretch now. We've got it stitched our top to our bottom all the way around and I used the stitched eyelet version. If I had chosen to use a metal eyelet, the circle would just be straight stitching like this. And we're going to look at how to finish both of these off. So I'm going to pop this out of my hoop, maybe. I put tape everywhere and then I have to deal with it afterwards. All right. So I'm going to pull our tape, and because I'm using a tearaway, I am going to tear the stabilizer out from around it. If you were using a cutaway, you would just cut it at the same time that you cut the vinyl. So I'm just going to pull off the water-soluble stabilizer that I added to keep that uh, running smoothly across my the bit of my machine. There we go. And there, there's some little bits in there, but when I hit that with a wet rag, those will come right off. Okay. So, get this last piece off. Now, I'm going to show you how I like to approach the tearaway, which is I'd like to score it a little bit first. So, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to run my finger in between the two pieces of vinyl, like that. And that helps it tear away a little easier and cleaner. Okay. There we go. Make 
sure I'm keeping this under the camera where you can see. All right, one more little bit here. Now, you could cut this out with scissors if you want. I do enough in the hoop stuff. Well, actually, I'm a quilter too, so I have a rotary cutter and ruler. But if you don't, and you do a lot of in the hoop stuff that needs to be cut, I would really suggest that you get um, get a rotary cutter because it just makes it so much easier. So I'm going to lay this so that I want this to be a little under eighth of an inch. So I'm going to just cover that stitching line with the blue strip along the edge of my ruler. Oop, and I slipped, but I don't care. Okay, it happens. What do we do? Here's what we do. We go in and we're gonna trim this extra close. So I find here where I slipped, that's as close as it gets. This is why I like to trim about, you know, just under an eighth inch away because then if something goes sideways like that, literally, um, then I can come back and trim up the edge so it looks even. If I go too, um, too skinny in the beginning, I won't really have any room to correct. And it's easier for that to happen when you're working out away from you. Ooh, that is really close. But it'll hold. All right, and then I'm gonna try to pick up. You can see how easily this sticks to the ruler. Um, that's why we put that water soluble on the back of it because if it sticks to your plastic ruler when you're cutting it out It's going to stick to the bed of your machine and part of what makes this a little tricky is I'm putting pressure on either side here because the Stitching in the middle and the applique are holding up the center of the ruler This is closer as I said it's closer than I like to go, but it's either this or you know I've botched the whole thing so this will be okay. Perfect is the enemy of completed. Okay. There we go. And one more side. I've had people say to me before how terrible their cutting is. Don't worry about it. You're doing this for fun. You're doing this for you. And even if you're selling things, you know, we are usually our own worst critic. And most people won't ever know what you agonized over. Okay, so I've got my straight sides cut. I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to round these corners off with my good applique scissors. end here. I think we got one more. I've got that. There we go. Okay, now I'm excited to report that I have a new hole punch from Tandy Leather. It's not their most expensive one, but it's also not their least expensive one. And what I'm going to do here is find a, find a punch that fits inside that circle, leaving a little bit of vinyl to spare. So you just kind of kind of match them up. I'm gonna turn this guy around because it only goes one way. I think I want this one, is that too big? Okay, Let's see if I can do this so you can see it without blocking the light or blocking it with my hand. So I'm gonna center it in the circle and make sure that I'm not sitting on any of the threads because if I snip those threads, they're gonna come undone. All right. Sorry, that probably seemed like I was shouting because I was right up close to the phone trying to see what I'm doing. All right, so, oh, so much better. Yep, perfect. I didn't even have to struggle like I normally do. All right, so there you've got your hole and Somewhere I had, here we go, this will work. I'm gonna pop it right through here. Come on, 
might want to use like a little crochet hook or something really tiny to slip it through there. And you can use cord on these. You don't have to use the fancy tassels. These were cheapo cheapo on Amazon though. Whoop. Yeah, I kind of goobered it up. Uh, there we go. There. See, almost everything can be rescued. Sometimes you do have to chuck it in the fuck it bucket, but often things can be rescued more than you would think. Okay. I might I might say we chuck this particular tassel in the bucket bucket. But that's how it works. Now let me show you how we would do one that needs a hole for a grommet. All right, my grommet kit, which fell sideways, half open, and everything got all mixed up. But that's gonna require some television show uh, or movie and a glass of wine for me to sit and sort through all this stuff. So I'm going to use, I think I'm just gonna use a silver one on here. Let's see what I've got. And I'm going to be turning the camera on and off so you don't have to listen to the use of the hammer and all of that stuff. But let me show you what comes in a grommet kit. You have your cutter. Now I actually bought a better um, punch from Tandy when I was there getting the uh, the hole punches. They don't they don't have one that's big enough to do the quarter inch or six millimeter grommet. So um, and I'm not going to do this on my self healing mat. I'm going to get a piece of wood. I am going to put it over the stitch circle and I'm going to hit it with a hammer and then I'm going to twist it until it um, cuts all the way through both layers. So I'm going to turn the camera off now so you don't have to listen to me uh, beating on things with a hammer. All right, so I cut a hole with the with this punch by whacking it with a hammer, twisting, whacking it with a hammer. I think a combination of those tends to make it go a little more smoothly. I did all of that on this cutting board, not on my self-healing mat, because I don't want to ruin my mat. And um, so I've got a hole here ready for the grommet. And I'll show you how you set it up. So this is your anvil. This is your, I don't know if they call it a press, but this is what you're going to hit with a hammer. All right. And I'm going to just push it in from the front and get the vinyl down as much as I can. Um, this can be a little tricky sometimes with marine vinyls that are thicker to get that all the way down on the collar of the grommet. So then I'm just going to pop it onto the anvil, and top it with my ring. Okay. And I'm going to turn off the camera again in a minute once I show you how this goes together so that you don't have to listen to the banging. But I, when I put this down over the post, I just kind of wiggle it a little bit and that helps it get seated in the, the concave part of the, um, the press and the anvil. All right, and now I'm going to turn this off so you don't have to hear the banging. Okay. I have dispatched the snarled up tassel from our bookmark and actually decided to show you a little trick instead of trying to tough it without tools. I made a little tool out of a piece of wire. I'm going to poke it through there and um, pull the cord up there and then pull it through and then I don't snarl it all up. So let my imperfection be your inspiration. Okay, almost. Come on, there we go. It's a pretty decent match for that thread. A little bit too purple, but it works. All right, so there's our bookmark. And here's the grommet, finished. And I've got a jump ring, or sorry, a split ring. And I'm just gonna pull it apart, pop it in there, and around we go. So there you go. You can get these at our Etsy store. I'll put the link in the description. And um, I'll also put links to our Facebook group where we have a lot of fun and um, get to learn from each other and Instagram as well. 
and um, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and please hit the like button if this was helpful for you. Have a great rest of your day.